The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development, with a platform and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives. At The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co. Johan Ilgenfritz. So Johan is the founder and CEO of UK Health Radio Network. Johan, aka the curator of health expertise, is a cancer survivor, motivational speaker, founder and CEO of UK Health Radio Network. His mantra is, good health is a choice. Through Johan's vision, UK Health Radio has attained a very clear purpose on a way to inform and animate for you to take responsibility of your own health. This does not mean that taking your health into your own hands, but it's part of the process of attaining and or keeping your health freedom. It is all about being informed, being empowered and being healthy. Dr. Johan is a partner. He's been supporting the Best You Expo for quite a few years and he has spoken at the Best You Expos and he spoke also at the Best You Legacy Clubs. He is just a, a great man with a beautiful message, with a great story, and who is just a, just a great individual. He's just a, a lovely human being. It comes across when you meet him, when you talk to him, he just gives you his full attention. He came, he was originally a, a fashion photographer and uh, he had to change his life around and, and his story is phenomenal. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much. Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Bernardo Moya. I'm the founder of The Best You, and today I have the pleasure of having a very quick chat with Johan uh, Ilgenfritz, who is the founder and the CEO of UK Health Radio. Hey, Johan, how are you? Hi, good morning, Bernardo. I'm really well, thank you. Um, the reason I do these quick um, interviews and webinars is because obviously there's people that stand out in, in the industry of helping others and uh, and helping others achieve their dreams uh, in this beautiful world that we love and we're passionate about, which is personal development and helping uh, to inspire others. And, and Johan's obviously at the forefront. So I, I came across Johan quite a few years ago. Uh, she was recommended to me by, by Janie Lee, actually, uh, made me aware of, of, of that and her program. She interviewed me. And, um, and obviously, since then, we've been connecting quite closely with Johan. And uh, I've got to say, it's an amazing story. So Johan, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and, and how you got to where you are now, what you do. Um, yeah, Bernardo, it, it actually um, started about six or seven years ago. I was a fashion photographer. I'd been working as a fashion photographer for 20 odd years. Um, and uh, in 2011, uh, f- first of all, in, in, in February, I had a heart attack of 2011. And then a couple of months later in June, while I was still wondering why I wasn't feeling any better after the heart attack, I actually got um, um, diagnosed with cancer. And uh, it, yeah, it was, it was quite a shock, actually, because I had actually up to then been um, actually really, really healthy. Um, I'd always done a bit of sport. Um, being a fashion photographer, you're always on the go, especially when you're doing outside shoots. So um, it was, yeah, it was... Um, it was a hell of a shock, actually, to be quite honest. Um, I directly after being diagnosed, I immediately started radiotherapy. I did two radiotherapies all in all in the end. Um, but the whole time during the radiotherapy, I, I, I kept on asking myself, why, why am I not involved? Why, are, why, why am I not being animated to be part of this? And... Um, it went on. I did uh, the radiotherapy, and in October of the same year of 2011, I got the the all clear. I was cancer free, but that that it was weird. I was feeling that um, it's not helplessness, but that feeling of almost like not being part of the process stayed with me. I still had it, you know. I still had it all the time, all the way through the the, the radiotherapy. But you know what it's like. Life goes on. It did, um, unfortunately, actually, I have to admit, because um, uh, in 
the next February of 2012 on my first checkup, my first post-cancer uh, checkup, I was told that the cancer had, um, had returned with a vengeance and that I had a life expectancy of about 12 months. And that was actually, it was a very profound day in my life, actually, because um, I know it doesn't say much for me, but for the first time in my life, I actually made a conscious decision. And that decision was, was not to die. My, my youngest son was almost three, um, I, and I just could not see myself not seeing him turn four or five or six or whatever it was. You know? So, um, and that's actually where my journey started. That's where the whole thing started. Um, the, the radiotherapy, the option I had hadn't worked. So I realized that I had to find another option or options, whichever came first. Or, um, so I started looking on the internet. That's where everybody tells you not to go when you're in uh, my situation. But it, it, um, it, really, it really proved to be um, good for me. What followed were, were like, was a, a very long time, a very dark time actually in my life because, um, you know, the internet can be a very dark place as well. And there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. So um, I spent many hundreds of, of, of hours searching the internet. And one morning, it was two o'clock in the morning, I read a, a line uh, that said, cancer cannot survive in an uh, oxygenated alkaline cellular environment. And it was like, well, I literally took my breath away, if, if, as you can imagine. It was, um, I, I, I knew I had found a lifeline for myself. Um, I woke my wife, I, I, I told her that this is what I'd found. And long story short, we started... Uh, researching it and I changed my lifestyle I changed my nutrition I became an, uh, a vegetarian first of all then later on a vegan um, I'm an alkaline vegan now but changed a lot of other things as well um, how to how to um, deal with stress you know in today's life everybody's always telling you yeah you got to get rid of stress you got to get it to get rid of stress but it's not possible but you've got to learn how to how to deal with it how to handle it how to to live with it, basically, which we did. And, um, and that was basically, this whole process was basically the start of UK Health Radio. Because I didn't, I wanted to, to prevent other people from having to go through what I'd been through. And uh, I wanted to create a portal where I could get as much good quality information, positive information, very important, together in one space, where people from all over the world could access for free. And that was basically um, the start of UK Health Radio. So, um, I mean, since then, um, we've grown tremendously and everything, and uh, we've added a magazine, and we've added WikiHealth, which is what it says, a Wikipedia of health. Um, it's our newest project. It's only been up and running since, um, I think it's uh, September or October last year. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been an exciting five years. I've been cancer-free now for, for almost four years. Um, UK Health Radio has been going for five. So, yeah, exciting time. If you're interested in working with me, contributing to the magazine, maybe speaking at any of our many events around the world, partnering or licensing The Best You, go to www.thebestyou.co. Amazing, amazing, Johan. Amazing uh, story. Thank you for sharing that. And then, but also, kind of, uh, I'm, I'm a great believer in, in uh, you know, I know there's quite a few people that have written books about turning points, but I, I'm a great believer that, that you know, we all, we all have those moments in life, you know, when, when there's a turning point that, that, I don't know, takes us on a completely different route, a different direction to where we are. And, and you know, all of a sudden, you know, the eyes open and, and, and now we start looking at life differently. So, I can only imagine what it must have been like, you know, to get that message from a doctor, um, you know, telling you how long you're going to leave. And obviously you 
ultimately thinking, well, hold on a minute. No, I disagree with that. Let me, let me come up with alternative options and, and look at alternative things. But listen, amazing and amazing what you've done with UK Health Radio. So UK Health Radio has been around now um, four, five years, did you say? Four, five years? Uh, in, in December was five years. Yeah. In December was five years. Amazing. Well, congratulations. And you've got such a fantastic lineup of uh, presenters and programs in there. So uh, again, what was your background as far as radio? Um, not much, uh, can I assume, or...? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, right, but radio has always been a, a, a very personal medium for me. I've, I've always thought of radio. It's not like television where you can watch TV and eat and do all kinds of stuff. But somehow when you, when you listen to the radio, you focus on it. And um, that's actually the reason why um, I chose the radio. I have, I have this saying that radio goes in your ears and stays in your head. <laughs> Yeah. And the information truly does. It's, it's, um, it's quite, it's quite funny. At that stage, I had a, a I had a, um, an agent here in London, a phot- photographic agent. And I walked into his office one day and I said to him, uh, do, do you have anybody that, that, that has anything to do with radio? And he, and it was literally like, yes, my friends, cousins, dogs, uncle kind of thing, you know? And um, he introduced me to um, this person who basically, he was just before retirement age. And he said to me straight out, I want nothing to do with, with the radio as such, but I'll teach you what I know. And um, he did, gratefully. And uh, that's, that's, how, that's how radio started. Amazing. And, uh, so, do you want me to ask you, how are you now? How old are you now, Joe? I'm 54. 54. Okay, great. I was uh, 46 where, when the process all started. It took me two and a half, almost three years to get rid of the cancer, all in all, all together. Um, and yeah, but as I said, almost just over four years I've been cancer-free now. Cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- listen, this is one of the beauties. I, I think kind of what we do is, is, is that uh, we keep coming across people that, you know, I say, you never know where it's going to happen. You, know, you never know where you're going to get this inspiration. It might be a book. It might be an article. It might be a talk that you see. It might be someone that says something, maybe something that you find on the internet. But the bottom line is, is that ultimately, I think that kind of, it's, it's, I think a lot of people tend to give up quite easily. In, 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 and I'm not saying in life, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure and I know everyone wants to live, but I'm saying that people tend to give up quite quickly on, on kind of what their, or what their road uh, or their path is in life, you know? So kind of, okay, look, this is what I do. I work in this company. Uh, I, this is where I live, you know? And, 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 and I think one of the things that we really need to focus is, is how can you become the best, you know, you know, what is the best version of yourself? And, and well, you, you and I have a similar story is on the fact that you started this four or five years ago and you, you're, you have no experience in running a, a radio or, you know, you're a fashion photographer. Well, I had absolutely no idea of running events, you know? So, I, I, I started also in my late 40s and um, in my early 40s, actually, I started running events. I had absolutely no experience in it. And then 10 years in and now five years, I've been doing the best you and, and I've been doing the best you expo. I have absolutely no idea. I, I come back from a background of real estate uh, mm-hmm. sales and marketing. So, you know, it's very far uh, straight. So what I'm trying to say with this is that it's never too late. It's never too late to become the best version of yourself. And, and I do believe that a lot of times people tend to kind of like, you know, just stay in that place that they are. I'm not saying they've given up in life, but, but they have if they don't actually do something about it. So, uh, and I think that's what you bring. You bring beautiful things with, with UK Health Radio and, and, and all the amazing experts and all the different subjects that you cover. I, I, I totally agree with you, Bernardo. I think um, a comfort zone is where I was in for most of my life, um, is actually a very dangerous place to be in all aspects of your life, because it, it sort of takes the drive out of everything. Um, I know my situation is different because I have a different motivation and I still do. I, my body just grows cancer like grapes. So I will always be on this journey because if I stop doing what I'm doing now, it will return. I know that. Um, but the other, and the other part of it is I must admit for me, it's, it's like a second life almost. And the people I have met in this life have been so incredible. You mentioned all our presenters, all experts in their fields, all incredible people, people that want to add um, value to, to as many people as they can. They, just, they, they use the radio to do it. 
with, which is which I'm totally grateful for. Meeting people like yourself, um, who has created the best you, that is unbelievable. Um, we've been we've been accompanying you now, f- like for the second year, the best you. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been fantastic. It's um, I truly I truly applaud what what you have achieved and the, the amount of people that you have have helped um, is incredible. Mm-hmm. Thank you. To find out more about our latest projects, get a free coaching lesson or download my book. Go to www.bernardo-moya.com. Well, thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, you're kind of like, you know, um, I was just sharing with you um, a joke of, of someone that asked me in America recently, says, you know, why are you doing this? And I said, I have absolutely no idea. And, and I remember obviously he didn't get my humor. And, 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 um, and no, 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 we have to work on the answer. That's not the right answer. I was just really joking. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but I mean, I think we do it. We do it because we believe in, in kind of what we do. I mean, listen, for me, it was a book. I read a book. It was Paul McKenna's book, Change Your Life in Seven Days. Mm-hmm. It really, uh, I, I found some really interesting techniques in there. To be honest, I was looking for it more professionally and trying to help my staff communicate and become better communicators. Mm-hmm. But then I found a lot more. And, and then I think kind of once I've done my NLP training and you get into personal development, you really understand that kind of, you know, and as you get older, you really understand that you, you know how little you know and you know how much you have to be open to, to learn new things and to explore. And you were just talking about comfort zone. I, I think that's, that's one of the things that, that I, I permanently do uh, and I have to continue doing. You know, I have to p- continue to be pushing the boundaries of what is and isn't possible. And I think kind of running these events is always a challenge. I mean, you know, kind of I look at the work. We put one year into this. And then, you know, I've got all my staff there. They're like, you know, completely stressed out. But, but we love it, you know, kind of having the opportunity to have 140, 160 speakers there, so many different experts covering so many different ideas and, and then just feeling the energy in the room and people walking around and, you know, like sponges yeah. taking it. It's, it's, just, it's just really great. So, yeah. And then you were saying about the radio, but I particularly think there's nothing like there's nothing like meeting and connecting with people face to face. You know, I think yeah. nowadays with the internet and, 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 you know, and phones and, and WhatsApps and messages, you know, we really underestimate the value of that human connection, you know, mm-hmm. in a time of, 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 of potentially more communication than ever, there's actually less than ever. There's less empathy. And I think there's nothing like that being able to connect and meet people face to face. I, I can't agree with you more. That's why, um, I love, I love these kind of events. I love being on the floor. I'll be there both days as well, the whole time. Because it's just the, the, the feedback I get from, I mean, I, we get a lot of feedback through the internet, through, you know, people emailing us and sending us voice messages and stuff like that. But face to face on the floor, when you're speaking with people and that is, that is where I get the most energy and, and draw the most strength from. It's fantastic. I really enjoy it. Yeah, no, I love it too. I love it too. And that's kind of, that's, that's what it is, is ultimately the, the, that, that's kind of when we work so hard, um, and, you know, ultimately, because like, I was saying to my team, some of them, they come up and say, oh, Bernardo, you know, are we going to have enough people showing up? Is it going to like, so listen, we've done everything we could do. We yeah. pushed as much as we can. We put all the work, we put all the energy, all the love. And at the end of the day, ultimately, it will be what it will be. But when you're walking around and people come up to you and say thank you, and, you know, that, that's kind of what it is, and you, you've got that opportunity to engage. So what I wanted to do, with your permission, Johan, is I'm simply, uh, very quickly, going to share my screen. So for, for those that are going to be watching us at a later date. Now, this is, uh, this is UK Health Radio. So it's ukhealthradio.com. Okay. Uh, this is um, the web page uh, where basically you can see the amazing uh, lineup of, of uh, speakers and programs that they have. They've obviously got all sorts of amazing opportunities there. And this is your, your magazine, isn't it, Triangle? That's, that's correct. That's, it's, yeah. uh, so tell, tell me briefly about the magazine. The magazine, um, I actually, I started originally to, um, to generate uh, income was to be um, honest. And, um, it, 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 it actually all almost started out as a leaflet in the beginning. Um, but we very, very soon, um, after we, we published the first leaflet, if I could call it that, we realized that there was this incredible, um, interest in it. So we, we immediately um, 
started working on a magazine, um, Rafaela, my wife, uh, she's the creative director for UK Health Radio. She's a, a, um, a graphic designer, has worked with some of the best um, people in the world, actually, especially in the newspaper um, area. And she took it on upon herself to do this. And I think what she's created is she's taken a, a, a magazine that is, you know, that is usually very clinical and turned it into this absolute lifestyle feel magazine filled with positive, always positive and incredible information. Um, at the moment we have between, we, we average between 60 and 80,000 reads uh, per month. It's a monthly magazine, comes out every month. And, uh, well, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, you know, yeah. we've been publishing the magazine for four or five years. We're bi-monthly now. We used to do monthly. I know yeah. the work involved in that. But yeah. it's a very slick mag- magazine uh, with amazing content, obviously, uh, as, as you have all these fantastic speakers. So congratulations. Uh, amazing. So well done. Uh, and obviously, in such a relatively short period of time. When I work with people, I normally tell them that, you know, things take time. There's a lot of people expect things to happen overnight. Yeah. You've obviously put the hours and the work in, but you've, you've achieved amazing things in, in four years. So congratulations. And then for those of you that are watching and want to come and see Johan, uh, and, and you know his talk will be also recorded and available at a later date online. But basically, so if you go to thebestuexpo.com, that's thebestuexpo.com, and then you go to the UK site, and I'll take you there now, you will see, well, that's Johan's talk, which is on the 16th of February at 4 p.m. And... Um, and also UK Health Radio is going to have a booth there throughout the two days, uh, interviewing and meeting all sorts of great people. So we're delighted to have you both there. Um, so as I said, if you haven't uh, yet got a ticket to the Best Year Expo, if you haven't heard of the Best Year Expo, where have you been? You must have been in a cave somewhere <laughs> because we're all over the place. And, um, and we're delighted right now. I think we've got over 11,000, 11,500 people pre-registered. We hope all of them will show up. Uh, I'm sure a few won't, but I hope we all do. And we've got an amazing lineup. We've got some fantastic uh, opportunities there. I think one of the things I emphasize, we've got something for everyone. And we've got all these different work, breakout rooms, which so we mindfulness and well-being, a better world, um, health and lifestyle, best for business, empowering women, very popular this year, passion to profit. Um, so, yeah, all sorts of great activities. We've got the main auditorium with Paul McKenna, Jason Vale, uh, Mary Diamond. And um, so, yeah, we've got fantastic stuff organized there. Uh, we've got more than 160 speakers. And I was saying this year, we've got so many women. Um, I would probably say probably about 70% of, of, of the speakers are all women, which is great. I think uh, women should take over. I'm ready. Uh, I don't know about you, Johan, but I think they do an amazing job and uh, we need more women at the forefront of everything. I can't agree with you more. They, especially especially in, um, by us as well, I think um, about two-thirds of our presenters are, are female as well. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No. Well. Great. Well. Listen. They, they bring so much, so many, so much needed passion uh, and love to 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 what we do. So, Johan, listen. I want to thank you so much for your support. I want to thank you so much for being involved in the expo. I looking forward to your talk. I know um, from what I heard last year was amazing. Uh, it was very good and very deep, and and I'm sure it will be this year too. So. Uh, I want to thank you so much and I'll see you in a couple of days time. Fantastic. Bernardo, thank you. I look forward to listening to yours as well and um, see you soon. See you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bernardo. Bye-bye. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co.